Hey, I just checked and modern art is still a pretentious, meaningless, nihilistic shit show. But about this piece of crap, looks like something I'd use to insulate my roof. No, it's hashtag beautiful. Want to use these ugly tiles for your kitchen floor? That'll be $250,000. Some nails hammered into a piece of burlap. That just sold for over $700,000. Look at the length of the description. Look at this, Rudolf Stingle, untitled. Listen to the description. The majesty of hieroglyphs are suffused with a sense of greater substance than the sum of their parts. The resulting panels of stark bright silver were transformed through a collaboration with the audience in a series of uncontrolled impulsive marks and messages carved into the surface. In other words, he stuck a piece of aluminum foil to a board and asked some random people to scrawl cat handed graffiti into it. That'll be a quarter of a million dollars, please. Oh yeah, and all that guff they write about it to disguise the fact that it's just a piece of foil stuck to a board. That's called obscurantism. It's a fancy way of confusing people so their initial discernment is temporarily suspended, making them afraid of criticising such art for fear of appearing uncultured or ignorant. When in reality, their first instinct that it was total bullshit is correct. It is total bullshit, just like most modern art. If a couple of teenage kids can fool visitors to a gallery in San Francisco into thinking that a pair of glasses they placed on the floor was part of the exhibition, then there are no standards whatsoever. I mean, can I just pick up a guitar and start playing made-up out-of-tune chords while warbling incoherently and expect to have a number one hit? Ever thrown a waste paper at a bin and missed? That's art. Ever stepped on a tin can? That's art. Congealed dried noodles sprayed gold. And how dare you suggest that that's not art? After all, someone stuck it in a glass box, so it must be, right? A man lying on a mattress, screaming for two and a half hours. <laughs> The wooden figurine was made by someone else, and that's not art. But Ken Kagami stuck a foam cock and balls through it. Now it's art. And then there's this classic. Deep down, these people must know they're pulling off a monumental scam, right? I mean, Damien Hirst literally wrote incinerate me on this, whatever it is. Is he taking the piss? Well, probably not. As so Amari discusses in his excellent book, The New Philistines, people have always railed against bad art. But what's happened to the art world in the last few decades is immeasurably worse. Because in trying to break the final taboo, the art world decided that it no longer had to be aesthetically pleasing. Art no longer had to reflect sincerity or the human spirit. It no longer had to require actual skill, talent, or hard work to create it. They changed the rules. And now, no matter how lazy, pathetic, worthless, ugly, or meaningless a piece of art is, so long as it's been filtered through the lens of social justice and identity politics, then it can be considered art. So long as its banal conceptualization can claim to address some imaginary injustice, be it colonialism, racism, misogyny, or whatever, it's celebrated. But there are some who simply can't take this sort of art seriously. I think it should be called the junk shop prize because if you put all this lot in a junk shop, you wouldn't notice any difference. But it's conceptual art. Some might say you're missing the point. Well, the point of conceptual art is it's meant to have profound thinking behind it. Um, if you think there's any profound thinking behind this, I think you're missing the point yourself. Ultimately, this is about the politicised abuse of art to advance and ingrain far-left narratives. Just as communist dictators used socialist realism as a political tool to thought police control and manipulate public opinion, the regressive left uses modern art, and by extension popular culture, 
as a weapon of indoctrination. And just like the communists used workers and farmers as political props to further their own power, the regressive left utilizes gays, transgenders, Muslims, and other minorities as human shields for their agenda. These avant-garde social justice artists like to think of themselves as dissidents fighting against the repressive mainstream. That's why they're obsessed with tearing down the supposed establishment the patriarchy, white male privilege, or capitalism. While the Saatchi Gallery, the Turner Prize, and Tate Modern are simultaneously sponsored by giant corporations, they're also rebelling against the very idea itself that art should be beautiful. If people say it's art, it's art. Um, well, I think it that's, might be, I think that's it absolute might, rubbish. It so you could say anything is art? You, you just could, has. You could say everything is art. But the point is that... Is uh, my shoe art? If you say it is, I have to then judge it on those terms. Well, I think that's a totally ridiculous argument. Well, I never heard anything more ludicrous in my life well, it's before. Sort of like but the real establishment, the elite institutions, are stuffed full of social justice identitarians. Any independent thinker left within these institutions who dares to flout their dogma is witch-hunted, shamed, and dispensed with. And there's the irony. The identitarians are not dissidents, they're the ultimate conformists. They're not fighting the repressive mainstream, they are the mainstream. They are the establishment, and they're using modern art to reinforce that control. They're trying to entrench it further by poisoning popular culture with identity politics. And that's why this matters. People might say, why are you so obsessed with it? Why don't you just ignore it? Because they're not content with having their dogma confined to a modern art gallery. No one even visits modern art galleries anyway. Have you ever been to one? They're always virtually empty, while real art galleries are usually packed. That's not where the battle is taking place. The battle is for popular culture. They want it on your TV screens, on your movie screens, in your music, in your advertising, in the school textbooks your kids read. In. Your. Face. If you want a vision of the future, imagine a social justice warrior autistically screeching at a human face forever. States of America. Visit the Twitter feed of any modern art organization and you'll see what I mean. Last weekend, MoMA ran a feminist Wikipedia editathon. Basically, a bunch of Triglypuffs and beta manlets got together to vandalize Wikipedia with baseless propaganda. Because the very term feminism has been so discredited, thanks to the behavior of batshit crazy feminists, that it's now considered to be more of an insult than a compliment. What the fuck has that got to do with art? Nothing. But again, everything has to be filtered through the lens of social justice. Look at the front page of Tate Modern's website. Feminist art. Videos about women artists. Discover more about women artists. Women artists in the collection. Art by women artists in the collection. I mean, geez, are men even allowed to enter your crappy gallery anymore? I really wanted to revisit this cinder block full of rocks and this masterpiece. But again, everything has to be filtered through the lens of social justice. Like hanging up your used sanitary towels to challenge the shaming of female menstruation. One, you're never going to make bleeding from your genitals not gross, sorry. And two, that's not art. But again, everything has to be filtered through the lens of social justice. Like performing a twerk for every black man shot dead by police and asking the mostly white audience to count every single one. Yeah, count those twerks while that humongous cellulite-ridden ass jiggles in your face, you racist honkies. One, more white Americans are shot dead by police despite committing less violent crime. And two, that's not art. But again, Everything has to be filtered through the lens of social justice. Amari provides innumerable other examples in his book, including how the narratives of entire Shakespeare productions are being disfigured to cater to 21st century social justice brainwashing. So, for example, suggesting that the fairy potion that causes people, alters people's desires in her debut production of A Midsummer Night's Dream was a date rape drug, or injecting all this modern slang. What Paul, I hear you say. All art was once modern art, and every new movement was criticized. They laughed at Picasso. They laughed at Matisse. Well, at least it's arguable that Picasso and Matisse is art. I mean, I don't personally like it, but I'll concede that it's art. It's not arguable 
whether a literal piece of trash is art. It's literally a piece of fucking trash. Yeah, but it's all about busting taboos and being daring. Bullshit. What about this? Is this daring enough for you? Well, it was deemed too daring for an exhibition in London celebrating, of all things, free speech, where it was banned. Banned because it was too inflammatory and offensive. Offensive to who? Terrorists? Banned because it might offend Muslims, but wait, I thought ISIS had nothing to do with Islam. The real reason it was banned is because it busted the one taboo they will never allow to be busted. Political correctness. Busting taboos my ass. The only real taboos left are the ones that impinge on your precious ideological safe spaces. And if anyone in the art world tries to bust them, they're ostracised and silenced. And that's why modern art is absolute crap. It's not about being daring or challenging the orthodoxy. It's about fortifying the orthodoxy. Nobody has created this much conformity in the art world since the Soviets. When artists were forced to conform to socialist realism or be locked up. 80 years later, how does the Western modern art world treat artists who don't conform? They're ignored. They're shamed, they're made irrelevant. They want this conformity to spread like a virus. Identity politics plagued high art is infecting popular culture. The obsession with political correctness, social justice and identity politics is beginning to ruin movies. Compliance with the edicts of identity politics, not objective quality, is the measure by which we're told to judge this medium. Look at the list of Oscar nominees. Almost all of them had some identity politics angle. They're incentivizing political dogma at the expense of cinematics and storytelling. The Oscar-winning movie for Best Picture, Moonlight, struggled to get beyond 7.5 on IMDb. Yeah, but it's about a gay black boy and the lead actor is Muslim. That's three gold medals in the Oppression Olympics. Quick, give it an Oscar. Any movie that fails to obediently genuflect to these force-fed social mores is panned. They even attacked the recent movie about the Boston bombings. Great movie. Oh, but it's offensive, they said. It's Islamophobic. In reality, it's only offensive to fucking terrorists. But because it dared to vaguely hint at the fact that Islam is not a religion of peace, it had to be disparaged. London Has Fallen got panned for the same reason. Now they're complaining that historical dramas set in England don't feature enough black actors, despite the fact that if they did, these dramas would cease to be historically accurate. Food bloggers who showcase foreign dishes are now being called racist. Zoolander 2 is transphobic. I could give you a thousand examples. Everything has to be filtered through the lens of social justice and identity politics. This is how they control art. This is how they control culture. This is how they control society. This is how they henpeck, demanding constant homage be paid to identity politics. Interfering in the creation of movies, which given the paucity of quality in traditional art forms, represent one of the last true art forms left. Along with video games, which are also under constant scrutiny and thought policing by permanently offended identitarians. So if you're ever unfortunate enough to find yourself in a modern art museum, and you're standing there trying to figure out why nothing resonates with you on any level. Completely bemused about why everyone around you isn't laughing hysterically. Bemused at the fact that they all appear to be taking it seriously. Don't be alarmed, because they're only pretending to understand. They're faking it to look trendy. You're the only honest person in the building. Modern art is complete bullshit. And that's because it's not art. It's merely a physical manifestation, born of the demented minds of social justice warriors, identitarians, and pretentious hipster douchebags. It's not art. It's politicized indoctrination. It's weaponized culture. It's socialist realism for the 21st century. And we need to reject it in all its vulgar forms before it succeeds in ruining absolutely everything. Click the link below to subscribe to the channel.
And for more breaking news, go to Infowars.com. The making of the President 2016, how Donald Trump orchestrated a revolution. This is the untold story of how Trump defied all the odds to win the presidency. From former Trump confidant Roger Stone, the inside scoop of how Trump rocked the establishment. Get your signed copy of The Making of the President right now at InfoWarsStore.com.